Hi, Todd here from Urban Sound Studio. Today we're taking a look at the Moog Model D synthesizer. Its gigantic sound featured three analog oscillators and an iconic ladder filter. And its layout set the standard for pretty much every synthesizer that followed. Now today we're going to take a look at the Model D through the use of the Behringer Model D. And its layout differs at times from the original Model D, and I'll be sure to point that out. But for now, let's get started making some sounds. Let's turn on our first oscillator and get it in tune. The oscillator bank features three oscillators that are for the most part identical. And in the mixer section, we have a switch to turn each one on or off and mix their balance with a volume control. Each oscillator has a total of six selectable waveforms. Let's start with the first one on square. The range knob allows us to set the octave for each oscillator. When set to low, it sounds like a series of clicks, as it is intended to be used as an LFO. Let's add oscillator 2 and tune it to match the first one and then drop it down an octave. With the third one, let's tune to the first oscillator and then put it up an octave. Another option could be to have oscillator 1 down an octave and make the second and third the same octave. Now we can gently detune the second and third ones for a fat sound. The mixer also allows us to mix noise into our sound. We can select from a white noise or a more musical pink noise. The mixer also has an external in volume for mixing in other sources. But a Model D trick was to route the output back into the internal in to get some additional distortion, feedback, and growl. Let's set that up. Here's the original. And now here it is overloaded. For now, let's turn off the external in and the noise. On the left, we could set some portamento or sliding by using our glide knob. A little glide goes a long way. With this switch, we have the ability to modulate the pitch of all of our oscillators. Our mod mix will determine what source modulates the pitch. On the original hardware, we were able to select between using oscillator 3 and the noise as the modulation source. On this unit, if we want to use oscillator 3, we need to also select this switch on the left. The mod depth knob on this unit takes the place of what was the mod wheel on the original synth.
We hear the pitch changing as we bring up the mod depth. But to really use oscillator 3 as a modulation source, we want to switch our control switch to off, and then our range switch down, so that we can use oscillator 3 as an LFO. That control switch can also be switched off if you want to just use oscillator 3 as a drone instead of changing pitches when you play on the keyboard. Let's switch from oscillator 3 as our mod source to the filter EG or envelope generator. Let's put oscillator 3 back into an audible range and then put it in tune. Now we can use the attack, decay, and sustain from the filter to get our pitch to rise and fall. This envelope can be used in place of filter modulation or in conjunction with the filter modulation, which we'll explore later. By turning our mod mix clockwise, we can have noise modulate our pitch, which adds a gritty sound. But switching from noise to LFO, we can use a dedicated LFO to modulate our pitch. On the Behringer version, we can switch from the LFO being a triangle to a square. This takes us from vibrato to trill effects. It is important to know that this separate LFO was not part of the original Moog synthesizer. Let's turn off our pitch modulation. I'm going to adjust the waveforms and add some additional harmonics to my sound. Let's explore the filter. If we play a note, we can adjust the cutoff frequency to remove the higher frequencies. With the first keyboard control switch on, we get one third of a tracking effect. And with only the second switch, we get two-thirds of a keyboard tracking. And with both on, we get 100% keyboard tracking of the filter. This becomes more obvious while performing along the range of the keyboard, and also when adding resonance. Let's add some emphasis, which puts a boost at the cutoff frequency, otherwise known as resonance. We hear the filter sing more. With more resonance, the filter starts to self-oscillate. The amount of contour is the amount the envelope below will modulate our cutoff frequency. The attack determines how quickly the cutoff frequency opens. The decay determines how long it takes to fall to the sustain level.
The envelope section below affects our amplifier or volume. To make it clear, let's remove the modulation from our filter. Attack adds a swell to the start of the note. Sustain determines the volume while holding the note. And the decay is the time it takes to fall into the sustain stage. To the left, the loud decay switch adds a release stage. When loud decay is on, we can also set filter decay to have the filter continue to modulate after the key is released. The two decay switches were not part of the original Moog hardware. On top, we have a filter mode that takes us from what Behringer calls a low pass to a high pass filter. This mode switch was not part of the original hardware. Listen to the difference between the two modes. And if we want the filter cutoff modulated by the left side of the synth, we could turn on filter modulation and then use the controls we used before. Let's use the LFO. And those are the sections of the Model D synthesizer. Thanks for watching. Do you have the Behringer Model D or are you fortunate enough to have tried or owned an original Moog Model D synthesizer? If so, please leave a comment in the chat below. And as always, please help support the channel by liking this video and hitting subscribe.